Good evening, and welcome back to 31 Horror Nights. It's October 14th, and tonight's movie is The Devil's Doorway. This is a found footage movie from Ireland slash the UK, and it was directed by a woman. Actually, I think this might be the only found footage movie I've ever seen that's directed by a woman. I might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure. Most of the time, found footage is meant to come off as very modern and contemporary of its time, but this is actually supposed to take place in the 1960s, so they got some pretty good camera equipment. It's about these two priests that want to record and document their visit to, I think it was called a Magdalene Center? It was, it definitely had Magdalene in the name, like Mary Magdalene, and it was a place where the Catholic Church held women. I didn't know that was a thing, apparently it was a thing. And there was reports of a miracle, but it turns out there's someone in there that is possessed by, I think, the devil. I think I've seen this storyline a few times in horror movies, so I think what happened was that the supposed miracle was a virgin birth, and the person possessed by the devil is actually the Antichrist. Because in the trailer you see a lot of, like, a creepy little boy, and that does line up with that theory. This movie certainly looks interesting, so I'm gonna go check it out. So that was the last of the female directed movies for this month. And I have to say out of all the four ones that I've seen that were female directed, this was definitely my favorite. I'm giving The Devil's Doorway an eight out of 10. It was a very solid found footage movie. So I was mostly right about the plot of this movie, except the original miracle was that um, this is a Catholic place. This is very Catholic. So there are statues of the Virgin Mary all over this place. It's called a Magdalene Laundry, I think. And they were pretty much, I think, an Ireland exclusive type of thing. It was definitely very bad that it happened, considering what the conditions are like there and the fact that they get labor out of the, pe out of the people being held there. It's like a mix between an asylum and a prison. The two main characters of this movie are Father John and Father Thomas, and um, John is the one that's behind the camera. Once again, this is a very high quality looking camera for 1960, but you're gonna have to uh, suspend your disbelief at some point, I guess. And what's funny is that there's a lot of parallels I can draw between um, these two and the two exorcists from the movie The Exorcist. Except instead of the young one, Karis, being the one struggling with his faith, and the older one, Marin, being the um, very staunch Christian, it's reversed in this one. John seems very sure and confident in his beliefs, but Father Thomas is a lot more jaded. He says that he's seen a lot of charlatans and tricksters over the years. And he completely just denies any sort of idea of a miracle happening outright. He goes to the place in order to prove that it, there's no miracle happening. I also do like this place as a setting. It's very creepy, it's eerie, there's a lot of like long hallways with corners and hidden rooms and stuff like that. And one thing that's uh, made obvious early on is that the lead nun who runs the place is not welcome to the two priests. She doesn't want them to be there, she asks very, acts very callous and secretive towards them. And in a way that is understandable, she explains that this was like where the Catholic Church sent the messes that they don't want to clean up and just leaving it to the nuns to try to figure it out. Overall, from a horror standpoint, I think that this movie is pretty well done. There are a couple of jump scares here and there, but they're not like the super egregious, stupid jump scares. And it did introduce a mechanic that I feel like I had to have seen in another movie, but I can't think of any right now. There's like, um, like say Paranormal Activity 3 had the thing where the camera was on the fan and it was oscillating back and forth in the room. That led to some new types of scares that we hadn't really seen before. And this movie has its own thing with the light on the camera. Because um, around like halfway through the movie, the bulb starts dying out. But it doesn't like just like flicker and die or fade away. It like keeps turning off for a few seconds, then turning back on. And there's this little like ding sound that it makes. And the fact that that light is usually the only form of light in the room means that there's always like a few seconds where the screen gets very dark and then it comes back on. And that opens the avenue for a lot of cool scares, a lot of different ways you can go about creating a surprise. I found myself getting very nervous when the camera was flickering because I had no idea what I would see when the camera light went back on again. I'd say to end the non-spoiler part, while this isn't the most original found footage movie ever, it does have enough distinctive things about it, and it does do enough things very well for it to be very good in its own right. But now I want to talk about a few spoilers. 
what they discover about the um, blood coming from the Mary statues, because there's a point when every single Mary statue in the entire building starts crying blood at once. It's the, um, they do a test and they discover that it's from a woman who is pregnant and they have like this like insane asylum thing in the basement where they lock up the dangerous patients. And there was this young woman who's being held down there and she is pregnant, but apparently she has an intact hymen. This, once again, was going back on my theory that there was a virgin birth and the Antichrist being born. But aside from that, most of the scares in this come from what seems like ghosts of children running around the place at night, and the um, leader nun makes it very clear there are no children living there. So it's very confusing how they got there, what's going on, and what they end up doing is that, actually it turns out, this place, I think it's supposed to be like a witch's coven, or something like that, because... It seems that all the nuns are in on it, and the goal is to basically breed and then, I guess, raise the Antichrist. The last part of the movie is the two priests going around these underground caves that are connected to the building, and the light does the flickering thing on and off, and they get lost down there, and it's scary, and they're both starting to get convinced that this is how they're going to die. John gets killed and that just leaves Thomas with the camera and the last scene of the movie is him going to another place and then him seeing like actual light coming from somewhere else besides the candle that he's holding and he walks in and he sees this like satanic chapel type of thing with like a bundle of blankets at the altar and this really did remind me a lot of the ending of Rosemary's Baby but when he goes to check it out there's no baby in there it was just I guess it was like a ruse or something because when he turns around one of the nuns like attacks him and kills him. This movie did have some clever scares like the way that they use the flickering bulb on the camera light to their advantage and they did a bunch of other really cool things like there was a scene where um, John is in his bedroom and then he sees like, hears like a knock at the window and when he turns to look there's like bloody handprints forming on the curtain like you see two already and then more of them start appearing. There's also a couple instances of when people leave the camera alone, something happens that they can't see because they're not behind it. And considering the fact that these are like really, really old, I think like film reel cameras, they can't just like rewind back and review the footage right away. I'm not sure how I feel about found footage movies with scores. I think it kind of takes away from the like realism that the movie's trying to convey. And I do think that the score in this movie was a little bit overbearing at times, but it wasn't that bad. I think the problem with having a score in a movie like this is that once the score drops out and it gets quiet, you start like preparing for a jump scare to happen. But despite its flaws, I would say that this is a very solid found footage movie. If you're into that, check it out. It's pretty good. Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow.